I saw a lady talk about leaving Christianity. Her reason was she didn't understand why Jesus came to die for our sins when God can just forgive them. And the sad thing is, that's the case for a lot of Christians, not understanding why Jesus came to die because people just say, hey, invite Jesus into your heart because he loves you. And they're not actually teaching people the gospel, teaching people why Jesus did what he did. So I'm gonna use this video to do my best to make this as easy to explain as possible so that you guys are equipped to make it very clear what the atonement meant. Number one, God is perfect. Number two, God is just. Now these attributes are very important because if God is perfect and God is just, he cannot contradict himself. So therefore God cannot just forgive sins. I mean, just imagine for a second that I had a court date tomorrow because I was guilty of some crime and I go into court and I'm guilty and the judge is looking at me and he says, you know what, Mike, I really do love you. So I'm just gonna let you go right now, I forgive you. That would be completely unjust. And every single one of us has broken his law. So every single one of us deserves his punishment. This is why Christians also make it very clear that we can't do anything to earn our salvation because we stand guilty in front of God. No matter what good things I do, I stand guilty in front of God. You can't go into a courtroom, be there for a crime and start saying, but, but your honor, you know, on my free time, I feed homeless people and I take care of foster children. The judge will look at you and say, that's fine and all, but that's not what we're here. We're here because there's a crime that's been committed. This is why we try to explain to atheists, it don't matter how good you think you are. If myself and an atheist go to this courtroom, we're both guilty. But here's the difference. The atheist steps up and he's found guilty and the fine is something he can't even afford. But then I'm found guilty. But the judge comes down off his throne, takes off his robe and hugs me and says, I'll pay your fine, son. I was still found guilty. I just don't have to pay my fine because I wouldn't survive that fine. And the only one that can take on all the sins is God. So when the Bible says God so loved the world, it is saying God so loved the world that he was willing to take on your punishment because he loved you. And when you truly understand this, then you understand that when it says that he is the lamb slain before eternity passed, you find out before we ever even committed our first sin, he knew it was going to happen and he already planned on dying for us. This is why there's foreshadowing of the cross all the way in Genesis. I mean, for all my Christians listening, I want you to think about the stage. Pontius Pilate, Jesus, and Barabbas. The judge, the innocent, the criminal. The criminal went free and the innocent went to the cross. Likewise, every single person will stand on that stage one day. Atheists, Muslims, Jews, Christians. And for those that know Jesus, Jesus went to the cross for them, so we go free. But for the people that don't know Jesus, they're going to their own cross. This is why Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is why there are no other pathways to God. It's not some exclusive thing. It's that he's the only one that can pay your penalty. Nobody else could have got on that cross because people think that what hurt Jesus on that cross was nails and whips and all that stuff. No, 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 that was nothing. While he was on that cross, he took on the full wrath of God for every single sin. What happened on the cross would be enough to evaporate every human alive. And that's why he had to do it. God said, I love you so much that I will come into my own creation and put on flesh so that someone can die for you. Because God can't die for you as God is. God can't come into the world as God is and die because God can't die. So since God loves us so much, he was willing to lessen himself, to literally come into his own flesh, which so many people look at and say, you believe in a God that can die? <laughs> the scripture says God uses what is foolish to show off his wisdom. He uses what is weak to show off his power. Why did Jesus die for us? Because if he didn't, we were headed to that cross. God loved us so much that even though he knew we could never get to heaven on our own, he said, I'm gonna come into the flesh and drag that flesh to heaven with me. He came into the flesh, took on a death that he did not deserve. Then he broke the rules of death and drug the flesh out of death so that when you and I die and the spirit of God is in us, we will break out of death. Death has been conquered. You see, death was never part of the plan. God created us to be immortal and to be with him. That was the purpose. But the punishment for sin is death. So by sin coming into the world, death came into the world. And then we became slaves to death. 
I mean, think about it. Your mortality literally limits you. You know that you only have a limited amount of time to get things done and to accomplish things and to do things. You have to be careful with what you might be doing in case an accident happens. So since we broke the law and brought death into the creation where it was never meant to be, he came into the creation to break death so that we can live forever with him as planned. And to be honest with you, anybody who wants a God that can just forgive, I don't want that God. When you look at every other religion and actually look at it, they believe in an unjust God, which is a very scary thing because that means God can change his mind whenever he wants willy nilly. So that means even a thousand years of eternity, he might change your mind and not want you in heaven anymore. You see, our God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He does not change. He does not go back on his word. So if he says, I will save you, he saves you. When he says you will be sealed, he seals you. Any God that can have a perfect law, let you break it, and then just be like, nah, I'm gonna forgive you, but I'll let you go to hell for it, that's unjust. I know I just was all over the place with that, but I hope that somebody understood it, and I hope it helps. God bless and go in peace, guys.